It takes a lot to make a copy of something in the physical world. I have to go to a machine, Xerox it, I have to you know, press record on a particular machine, I have to press a vinyl disc. In the digital world, I will make copies without even knowing it. The thing is, with digital media, every time I want to just transfer something, I'm making a copy of it. Sometimes even just opening a, a file is, is making a copy of it. So all sorts of things that are perfectly ordinary in the physical world, loaning a copy of something, giving it away, reselling it, in the digital world are actually prohibited because I'm making a copy and the law doesn't let me do that. So if nothing changes in the law and all media goes digital, then I can't share things in the same way. It means that we don't own the copies that we have fully. It affects people's privacy, and it also hurts the ability of these works to be preserved into the future. So my name is Sherwin C. I'm Vice President of Legal Affairs at Public Knowledge. Public Knowledge is a nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. Uh, we work in, in copyright and telecommunications in the public interest. Copyright law is designed to promote the progress of science and useful arts. It's designed to make sure that we have creative works, and it does that by giving authors certain rights to prevent other people from doing things with their works, like making copies of them. Technology has opened up so many ways in which we can tell stories. Things are smaller, they're more portable. There's so many things you can do on a screen that you can't necessarily do on a page. So there's a lot of ways in which you know, this brings so many advantages. I, I think that those advantages are important for us to, to explore. I want to make sure that as we do that, we don't let a, a quirk of the law prevent us from, from using things the way we always have. They don't prevent us from owning things. They don't prevent us from sharing things. How many times have you come across your, your favorite album or your favorite book because somebody loaned it to you, somebody pushed it on you, said you have to watch this, you have to read this. And with digital media, that ability goes away. Think about all of the collections in a library. The library gets to lend those books out to people because they own them. When it owns a physical book, it knows the rights it has in that thing. When everything's a digital copy, a digital subscription, the library depends upon the publisher as to whether or not it will have access to those things. Used bookstores rely upon the fact that people can transfer their works. Used record stores, they're going to rely upon the fact that people can move these things, these objects around. And those things without this ability could disappear. It affects people's privacy. If somebody wants to read something privately and not have there be a record of how they got that or what they're reading, if you can't loan books, if you can't borrow them from a library or from a friend, if you can't buy them at a used store, if in fact the only way to get a copy of a book is to buy it, then there will always be a record of who is reading what. And that matters a great deal for a lot of different things. Let's say I take out a book on uh, how to deal with depression or HIV. Or imagine a kid in a small town, a, a really conservative community, who is interested in a book on coming out of the closet. Or maybe he just wants to read books uh, by authors who have gone through that sort of thing and to be inspired by or to uh, draw courage from other people's stories. Now his ability to do that and form his own ideas are going to be uh, a lot more limited if the only way he can get those books is off of his parents' Amazon account. So if each individual uh, album or book is tied to a specific person and can't be transferred, then it goes away when they go away. And that actually hurts the ability of things to be preserved. There's a tendency, I think, for people to, to denigrate you know, the, just the immediate generation's pop culture. And these things might become important later. People might actually start to appreciate things, maybe a generation or two later, that were considered disposable. Or even if it's not considered a work of genius, these things are important to our history. If you chain that thing, if you chain that copy, that story, to one person, 
then its ability to spread beyond that person dies with that person. The ability for them to move not just from person to person in the present, but move from generation to generation into the future goes away.